So here's the result. Continuity via pre-image tests, I called it. So we, we have a function which maps the main in Rn into Rm. Yeah, we just, we just, that's how we define pre-image. That's how we define pre-image. Yeah. And the theorem claims that f is continuous if and only if the pre-image of every open set is open. I'll show you probably one way. Both ways fit on the slide. Both ways. Just one spread of a slide contains the complete proof for, for this theorem. So let's just go this way. Let's just fix an open set. So when I say we go this way, my assumptions are like this. We assume that f is continuous, the way we define it. And we also assume that u is open set. We need to conclude that pre-image is also open set. It's very good proof, actually. I mean, because it just shows you the, all of the concepts in, in one slide. So look at this. I fix a point. In my pre-image, remember, I need to convince you that pre-image is an open set. For that, I need to convince you that every element of the pre-image comes together with the ball in the pre-image. That's, the, that's for the set to be open. That's what we need to show. So I fix a point. Point being in a pre-image is the same as the image of that point being in U itself. That's the definition here. U is assumed to be open, right? Every point in the open set comes together with the ball. So since U is open, I can say that this point in my set comes together with the ball, right? There is a little ball around this point which entirely within U. That's because U is open. Now, since f is continuous, that's the point where we use the second assumption, that f is continuous. What do we know for the continuity? For the continuity, we know that for every positive epsilon, there is delta, such that, well, I can show, such that every point at delta distance from the x goes in the point at epsilon distance from the f of x. That's the definition of continuity in terms of epsilon delta definition. If I just condense this into this line, which says image of the delta ball around x goes into epsilon ball around f of x, and if I now reinterpret this in terms of the pre-image, that will be exactly this. That the ball, thank you, that the ball around x delta radius belongs to the pre-image of this epsilon ball, which is even smaller than the pre-image of u. And that's the end of it. Look at this. I fix the point. I fix the point in my set, and I presented you explicitly the choice for the radius of a ball around this point, which comes entirely, which goes entirely within the pre-image f, f negative 1 u. Every point within the pre-image comes together with a ball. It means that the pre-image is the open set. The ingredient here, the key ingredient here, u is open and f is continuous. And that's the end of it, the end of the forward proof. Hence, f dash uh, f negative one u is open. The opposite one, even shorter. The opposite one now says this, if this is true, if pre-image of every open set is open, f must be continuous. And I'll check it by definition, by epsilon delta definition. Look at this. I fix x point, and I fix epsilon, positive one. Since the ball of radius of any ball is open set, we just prove it today with you, ball is an open set, The pre-image of the open set is open, isn't it? It's just the assumption now we have. For every open set, the pre-image is open. That's the assumption that we're starting off. And this is an example of the open set. If I take a pre-image, this will be open. Now, I, will, I would like to interpret what it means this to be open. It means that, well, in this set, 
I have point X, right? Because point belongs to the pre-image when the image of this point belongs to the ball itself and f of x belongs to that ball, the center of that ball. And because this set is open, this x belongs to the set together with some ball around it. And that means there is a radius, delta, such that x belongs to the set together with the ball. Actually, I lied to you a little bit. It doesn't fit on the entire slide. I have to scroll it up a little bit. <laughs> Well, it's just all I have to do. I have to say that this embedding, this embedding, it is here already. If I just reinterpret this embedding like this, thank you very much. If I reinterpret this embedding like this, it will be exactly the definition of continuity, right? Because look at this. That is, F, this ball is taken entirely into this ball. Look at this. For every positive epsilon, I found delta. Here it is, explicit choice for delta, such that the ball around x goes into the epsilon ball around f of x. This is a definition of continuity, and that's the finish of the proof. So you were right, actually, a little bit, this is not as difficult as my direct argument, but still it just takes a little bit of, of that difficulty inside. But after we have this theorem, those questions in the tutorial, and you, have, you will have quite a few, you can do them in a really simple way via these two theorems. One about the elementary functions and the other about the pre-images in case f is continuous. So it's a really two powerful tools and you have to learn how to use them together. Any questions?